to well of course it's me again sir charles uh, delivering you the content that we're going to have for this semester so we're going to cover a series of lectures involving electricity and hopefully magnetism as well and then of course the subsequent topics under general physics too which i hopefully will be covering no but knowing the <laughs> the things that has happened during uh, physics one well we'll see okay so for now we're going to have a very short introduction on the concepts of charges and then of course the mathematics behind static electricity which is coulomb's law okay so if you did the what do you call this the previous lobster course thing that we have provided you last year so i hope you already have a glimpse of how to understand what charges are but of course we're going to uh, review those so charge is an intrinsic property so it's like mass all right so if mass is the amount of matter of an object so charge is a property of matter that causes it to attract or repel objects okay so of course uh there's no such thing as like a macroscopic matter that only contains lots of positive charge or lots of negative charge so that would either be an imbalance of something so let's say at one point there's an equal amount of positive and negative charges on an object more on that later but an imbalance of those will uh, produce an electricity all right so that's what we call static electricity okay so sir what is this like attraction repulsion thing that you were saying so basically it's uh it's exactly that no? so physics doesn't have to complicate a lot of things so the very elementary definition of attraction or repulsion is just that so to uh, have an attraction on things we must have like two different charges so a positive and a negative charge okay then for repulsion we would have either two positive uh, charges or two negative charges so for simplicity's sake we'll uh, only going to cover very minimum number of charges for now okay then we're going to progress on tons of charges later on in this lecture series but for now we're going to focus on maybe two or maybe three let's see no so basically that's that so attraction would be uh different charges so let's say a positive and a negative charge then we have repulsion which would either be a positive charge two positive charges or two negative charges so a positive charge are possessed by primarily protons then of course we have positively charged ions so that's cations now so then we have uh, electrons or as the fundamental uh, particle that possesses negative charge on the side of ions we have anions okay but basically we'll just call them particles unless stated by the problem okay so there's that so let's now proceed on the constants so i hope you will be able to remember many of these values as we will be meeting them along the way okay so first are the charges of the electrons and the protons now so our unit for charge is in coulombs okay so remember that all right so that would be in coulombs and then we have the masses okay so the mass of an electron 
which will come in handy later is this one so that's 9.11 times 10 raised to negative 31 kilograms then we have mass of a proton which is negative i mean 1.67 times 10 raised to negative 27 of course on masses okay we already know in physics one that there's no such thing as negative mass okay of course we have negative exponents because that signifies that the value is really really small but for the charges we have positive and negative values so for positively uh, charged particles we have positive 1.6 times 10 to raised to negative 19 then we have uh, negative 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 for negatively charged particles actually negatively charged electrons okay then we have the coulomb's constant so this could be rounded up to 9 but you can have 8.99 or 9.00 either works okay newton meter squared per coulomb squared okay then for the other constant we'll be uh, tackling them in greater detail on the next meeting okay so that's it uh what i'm tasked to cover now is Coulomb's constant okay so Coulomb's constant if you're going to take a look at it is eerily similar to uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation so let's have a look at that so by the way I'm going to try like a new whiteboard thing so here's that okay so if you remember this is f sub g right or you can just write capital g instead maybe so that would be what ah uh, yeah small g because this is the big g is for the gravitational constant so this will be m1 m2 over r squared right then for electromagnetic force so this will be k q1 q2 over r squared this k which is what we are discussing now is what we call the coulomb's constant okay and as you have seen on the powerpoint coulomb's constant is also known as there actually that's it the coulomb's constant so that's 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared okay so there so basically it's an inverse square law as well so that means as the distance between charged particle grows so here are your charged particles okay uh, there's an inverse square decrease in their uh, electromagnetic force so we're going to put that into a mathematical test by solving this guided practice problem which I hope you are very familiar with all right so this will be our first problem okay so what is the magnitude of the force of a 25 coulomb charge exerting on a 35 coulomb charge 16 centimeters away okay so of course we're going to deal with it the way that i have uh, i mean the physics teachers have taught you since the first semester so that would be in gresa so first let's state the given so what what are the given so you have charge one which is 25 coulombs okay then we have charge two which is 35 coulombs right and then we have the distance which is uh, we will be using R or radius as our uh, unit, okay? Because, uh, well, we're going to see later why, okay? But for now, let's stick with the con convention. So that would be 16 centimeters. Okay, so let's convert this now. I'm not going to show the conversion anymore, but of course, on your solution, you may show them so this will be what 16 times 10 raised to 2 meters 
Negative 2, I mean. Right? Because this is centi. So that's 10 raised to negative 2. Okay? 4 required. The magnitude of the force. So that would be F sub E. Okay? For the equation, you have the Coulomb's constant. So that's F sub E is equal to K Q1 Q2. Then, uh, what do you call this? Absolute value because, of course, we don't have... I mean, negative force is doesn't really make sense for uh, these problems. And I'm going to show you why in some of the examples. Okay, so there. Then for the solution, we could just substitute. Okay, so that's F sub E is equal to what's our K? 8.99. Eight point ninety nine times ten raised to wait. What's the value of this? This is what positive nine. Ha! Huh. See, that's the reason why I'm asking you to memorize it. So it's positive nine. So it's really large. Okay. So unit is newton meter squared per coulomb squared multiplied by what's our first charge? Twenty five coulombs multiplied by thirty five coulombs all divided by. Uh, 16 times 10 raised to negative 2 meters, which is of course needed to be squared. So remember guys, you have to of course convert your units into SI. Okay? So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have uh, a problem to deal with later. So you're going to notice there are cancelable units here. So you have coulombs here. Then if you're going to distribute the square so you're going to square 16 then of course negative 2 times 2 so that would be negative 4 then meter squared will be squared as well so you're going to notice that this can be cancelled see so what remains as the sole unit is in newtons which is of course the unit for force if you still remember the topics that we have discussed in physics 1 see so what's the answer for this one so, force is, I mean, electromagnetic force is equal to what? Oh, I think you can solve for that one. Okay. Uh, what's important here is uh, you have seen how this, this could be demonstrated. Okay. So, if you have questions, you may address it to your, of course, physics teachers. All right. So, let's proceed on to the next problem which is just right about here. Okay, so for our second problem, so how many electrons make up a charge of 84 microcoulombs? So that means we have 84 microcoulombs of charge. We're going to determine how many charges are there. I mean, how many electrons are there? Okay, so we have our given, which is charge, so that's Q is equal to 84 microcoulombs so kindly convert that to si already so what's micro so that's 10 raised to negative 6 right so that's 84 times 10 raised to negative 6 or then don't forget your units which is in coulombs then we have as stated here electrons right here or here so that means we're going to need the single charge of an electron which is what so charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10. So that's negative, all right? Times 10 raised to negative 19. Okay, also let's verify this on our powerful PowerPoint. Okay, so there. Units, of course, is in coulombs. There, our required is number of electrons. So I think or N of E. So I think the solution for this is uh, very obvious. So actually you can just uh, show it here. So that's N of E equal to what total number of charges. Okay. versus 
one. Right? Does that make sense? So if you're going to show the solution, so that would be what? So that's number of electrons. It's equal to, what's our total charge? 84 times 10 raised to negative 6 coulombs. So a charge of a single electron is what? Negative 1.6. Ah, this will be having, of course... What do you call this? Uh, an absolute value as well. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, I want you to understand. All right, because there might be what do you call this? Uh, a discrepancy in how we understand the symbols. But for now, let me finish this one first. So we have this 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs. So you can cancel. C. Alright. So just divide that. So and then input that on your calculator. So what's the answer? Of course, you try to solve it as well. So you'd know what the answer would be. Okay. So you fill that one out, then that's it. Okay. So what I'm saying earlier, uh, signs of charge. The the it's not the same as signs of the direction. Okay? So, let's say uh, we know that a particle is an electron. Okay? If we have another particle that we're going to place beside it, let's say an electron as well. So, there will be a repulsive charge. Or, I mean, a repulsive force. That will be between each of these particles. Then they will be moving on the same direction. This particle, of course, will be experiencing a movement to the left. Correct? And this particle will be experiencing a movement to the right. So if you remember our Cartesian coordinate system, this direction is positive, And this direction is negative. So that's what I mean. Okay? So the symbol we attach on the charged particles only indicate what type of particle is it okay if it is a proton or a positively charged particle or a cation or if it is an electron or a negatively charged particle or an an, an ion okay so it, that's the reason why we always place uh what do you call this absolute value absolute value symbol thingy Okay, because uh, ultimately, if you're going to express values that are about numbers, okay, so that's counting, right? So we don't count physical matter negatively because upon arriving zero, that's it. So there's no such thing as negative one, let's say negative one apples, right? So, we're just counting 0, so that's empty, then 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Then, at the same time, for forces as well, uh, the values of charges, I mean, the final uh, symbol of charges doesn't really matter because uh, the, ex the experience of attraction or repulsion is both experienced by the particle. So, let's say we have here a proton. And then we have an electron. So what would be their the force that we they will be experiencing? Of course, this will be attraction. So let's say if this is one e, and then this is one e, then let's say this is one p, this is one e, they will experience the same. What do you call this? The same force the same electrostatic force if you're going to solve for that so you're going to have f sub e is equal to 8.99 let's say the distance between them is let's say one meter okay so this is one meter then mm -hmm. all right so let's say this is one meter as well so this is 8.99 times 10 
raised to 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared. So this is 1 C B squared, right? Because, I mean, no, uh, the unit of this is, uh, what's, what's this? 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 C to B squared, something like that, right? Then for this one, this will be, this will be negative because this, those are electrons. Then we have here 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared uh, multiplied by positive 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs multiplied by negative 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19. Columns. So, see the difference here? Okay. For this one, you're going to have a positive answer. Well, you can solve it naman for you to see. Alright. For this one, you're going to have a negative answer. Right? And I think that should be the indication of what the symbols would mean so if you're going to have a positive answer the force that you're feeling is a repulsion right that means it's a repulsion okay for this one if you're going to have a negative answer the force that you're going to feel is an attraction so that's the only purpose of the sign it doesn't designate the direction of where your particles are going so we're going to cover that uh, at a later time okay at a later example so for now I, I want you to remember that that the signs of the charge doesn't indicate the direction where it's headed it signifies what kind of force they will be feeling if it will be an attractive force or an or a repulsive force okay so I hope we have clarified that one so let's proceed on guided practice problem number three okay so see here it is indicated that the necessary force is attraction okay so first let's state the given so we have an iron nucleus so what's uh, iron iron is fe26 right uh, okay so uh, it has been stated that what we need is nucleus so then since we have 26 uh, protons that's why the atomic number of iron is 26 diba? so you can look it up on your periodic table so that means we have 26 protons okay and one proton is equal to 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs. Alright? Then we have one electron. Okay? So we have an electron of iron. Okay? Which is, which has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs. Okay? Then we have the distance between them. Oops, this which is 1.7 times 10 raised to negative 12 meters. Okay, so for this one, this will be your Q1. Then, of course, this one will be your Q2. Alright? So, so that you won't be lost. Okay, so for a required, we need, of course... Electric force, you can actually just use capital letters if you're having troubles with iron, of course, being Fe. So this will be electrical force. For our equation, we have, of course, Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. There. Okay. Just remember the signs that you will be having before proceeding on taking the absolute value. Okay, because it will indicate if it's an attraction or a repulsion. Okay, so for our solution, uh, let's move a bit here. So that this will be F sub E. 
is equal to Okay, so this is 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Multiplied by what's our, what's our Q1? So that would be 26 times 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs, correct? Multiplied by, we have a single one, so that's 1e, e, alright? So we don't have to write that anymore, so that would be negative 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs, there. So you can divide this all by, actually, let's use the ruler. <laughs> Uh, so we have a straight line although this is not really necessary but I want to draw a straight line there you go okay so bye bye ruler then we have r squared which is what 1.7 times 10 raised to negative 12 meters so that will be what squared okay so you can distribute now the square so I, I want to cancel this one out. So this will be squared. This will be squared. Then this will be squared. So you can cancel the units now. There you go. So you're left with newtons as the sole unit. You can now proceed on, of course, solving this and putting it on your calculator. Don't forget to include the, what do you call this? The parentheses, okay? So that's it. If you have questions, of course, you can ask your, once again, you can ask your physics teachers about it. Alright, so for answer, let's leave that at a mystery. So that will be yours. But remember, this is what? Attraction. So don't forget to, to state that this is an attractive force. Okay, because you're doing this magic thing here, the absolute sign, absolute value sign there so once you do that you will be losing the symbol so you won't be able to tell if it's attraction or repulsion but of course we're going to use the symbol to designate directions which i will be showing on the next problem so of course you do just that okay so uh I will, the last two so we still have Two more guided practice problem. One that uh, tackles three particles, no? Here. Then one that tackles particles that are placed magically on a plane. In this case, it's placed like a triangle. So we're going to tackle those on the next video. Alright. So for now. That's it. Thank you so much.